What's up, everyone? Welcome back to another segment of the Black Gnostic Podcast. I'm your host, David Seti, and I hope that you all have me a great afternoon here as I sit here drinking this. I'm drinking this turmeric uh, tea, just this yolk from the Yogi brand that you see in Walmart. I'm actually becoming really, really um, an avid tea drinker. So if any of you know some good teas that you know, some good brands, drop a comment and let me know so I can probably try them out. But yeah, this turmeric, it's pretty good. Um, it's turmeric and I got like some ginger and some lemon and some honey and some lemon juice. But with that being said, as always, if you can be so kind as to like the video, subscribe to the channel and share it if you would like. It's free and it helps me out tremendously. Today, we're going to get into a subject that is I've been wanting to talk about this for a very long time now. As with most stuff, I just never get to it. And I know that this is going to be a hard video to make um, because the subject is touchy. And usually when it comes to this type of thing, you have to be on one end of the spectrum. You have to be on one extreme. Uh, it's sort of that either you're against us or you for us type thing. Me being a Gemini, I've always had this thing where I was able to look at both sides of the story and see where that person may make sense and that person may make sense and where that other person does not make sense and where that other person does not make sense. And being a practitioner of ancient comedic philosophy, magic, spirituality, however you want to call it, I personally, for me, take great offense when people call people hoteps. Now, I know that that is a trendy new thing, just like calling people woke and just like calling people a conspiracy theorist, you know, words and phrases that you never really heard talked about on the mainstream. That's why when I see things become more mainstream, I know, okay, something right about that is the reason behind it. Propaganda has inf infiltrated the black conscious community. Now I will say this too. I believe that the black conscious community is on a threshold. And I believe that going into this, the rest of this decade, you know, 2022, 2023, the black conscious community is either going to have to do two things. Either you're going to have to change, reevaluate your thought process and what you're, what you're taught teaching, or you're going to go the way of the dinosaurs. I came across this uh, post, um, associate of mine on Instagram posted on his story and it was talking about, um, you know, whole tips and why they're wrong and all that kind of stuff. So I clicked on it to see, what it is. And I noticed that um, when they were describing a hotel, it's usually a cis hetero, I hope I'm saying this right, a cis hetero black man or woman that usually spouts cons quote unquote conspiracy theories and basically have like this whole pro black thing and um, it's very patriarchal and homophobic. Okay, I give you that. Do those things exist within the black conscious community that you label hoteps? Very much so. I would be disingenuous and be a liar if I did not say that those things aren't there. Now, I personally do not believe that you should be calling these people hoteps. I have a really good book I go to called Philosophy Podium from the Earth Center by Master Nev Nava. The Earth Center is one of the best organizations which I'm not affiliated with them, but like I, I don't, I, I'm not joining them or anything like that, but I do purchase their um, materials and things like that, their books and stuff. When it comes to authentic comedic spirituality, when it comes to a, to me, for me personally, more of a pure form, getting back to the root of comedic spirituality, not being so caught up in the pyramids and the, the pharaohs and all that kind of stuff, but really the, the philosophical spiritual thought process of our people at that time. Now, in the book, he goes into how, and I had to meditate on this for a long time because it was brand new information to me, a brand new way of looking at something. But as a black Gnostic, knowledge is everything to me. And I understand that sometimes when you're presented with a new form of knowledge, especially ancestral knowledge, it can totally change the way you view things because, you know, you've been taught for so long to view it this way. He goes into how human beings have this tendency to corrupt things that were once pure and sacred. You see it in things like purification rites, and it makes you question, 
why do the gods have the initiates go through purification things like whether putting bathing your in, in blessed water or um using incense or whatever, pretty much to cleanse the spiritual body. And I believe that's because there is a, for me personally, that there is a form of corruption, not, not from a um, Christian point of view of like, oh, you're a sinful human, you know, you're going to hell. No, not that. It's deeper than that. There's a form of corruption that when you approach the divine, that has to be washed. That has to be getting re- symbolically, of course, gotten rid of. So when it goes into this thing about human beings corrupting things, Hotep, for me, is a divine word. It is a word in ritual and in spiritual practices that you greet the gods with. You ask that a god be in Hotep with you or Hotepu with you, at peace with you. And to see it taken and then made this derogatory term, it really kind of furthered I, I got it. Under, I understood more of that concept that human beings, we do, we do have this tendency to corrupt sacred, pure things. And especially when it's put on a national, more of a grander level where everybody is calling something out, everybody is into saying the word now, it just becomes, it loses its power. If you've ever been in the presence or even conducted comedic rituals and read the Medunetzer, and had any sort of inkling, you know, any sort of felt any sort of thing coming from it, you know that that language in itself is very powerful. Now, I understand that us living in the 21st century now, no, we may not be pronouncing every little thing right, you know what I'm saying? But for what we do pronounce and what we do have, it holds a lot of weight, it holds a lot of power. And if you haven't even Pick up the Book of the Dead or the Book of Coming Forth by Day. Get the version where you can read the Medunetra and you can read the English part two and speak the translation of the Medunetra. You would feel power. And I do believe that there is a bloodline of us who probably were in, a, in another life. We were probably priests or had some sort of dealings in the, the, the spiritual tradition of ancient Kemet. And we find ourselves back here, I guess, quote unquote, reincarnated today. And when we go about doing certain things, we feel it. I think when it comes to comedic spirituality, when it comes to, oh, just simply wearing an ankh, that that means that you're somehow pro-black. It doesn't, not to me at least. Uh, When it comes to calling yourself, giving yourself a comedic name, or whether it is putting some uh, comedic statue, Egyptian statues on your, your altar or around your house. To me, that doesn't really mean anything. It is about connecting with it on a very sacred level. And if you connect with it on a very sacred level, then yeah, calling ignorant people hoteps would be offensive to you. There's a really good blog I actually found today, which is odd. It's um, sacredsexualities.org, and I'll put the link in um, in the comment section so you guys can go to it and um, see it for yourself. And he goes into the author, um, Dr. Heru Kahuti, he goes into seven reasons not to call someone a hotel. And I won't read every reason um, because I really do want you guys to go and really dissect what this um, what the blog is talking about, this blog post is talking about. And let me see. Uh, okay, yeah, it says, well, number one of the reasons is this. Number five, most people who are labeled hoteps have had decades of indoctrination in Christianity or Islam and Western thought before they study anything else. That indoctrination informs and influences their approach to everything. With that being said, we have to understand when you're coming across a quote unquote hotep, even I made that mistake going and of course i wasn't cognizant of what i was doing i just think that it's a natural form of the decolonization uh, process if decolonization is a process it really is for at least for me it was and so when you approach comedic spirituality or usually any african sort of thought or spiritual system your immediate response to it is to try to find in it christian values or quote unquote islamic values so you approach the Book of the Dead and say that there has to be the Bible, and it's not. The Book of the Coming Forth by Day is not the comedic equivalent to the Christian Bible. Or you look at the 42 Laws of Mayat, 
and say that, oh, well, this has to be the Ten Commandments and it's not. Now, the argument can be made that the Ten Commandments were taken from the 42 laws of Mayat, which I do believe. But you don't approach the 42 laws of Mayat the same way you approach the Ten Commandments. And then we get into the issue of God. Well, all my life I've been growing up to believe that there is evil and there is a Satan and his demons. And then there has to be, you know, God and Jesus and the angels. So then I approach the story of Osiris, um, Asar, Heru, Aset, and Set in the same lens of Christianity. So then Set has to be the Satan and I have to view him and treat him as such. And then Osiris and Heru, they have to be the Jesus type messianic figures. So I have to view them and treat them as such. I set is Mary. So I have to view and treat her as such. And although those archetypes are the basis of where we get the whole Jesus Christ myth from, they should not be approached the same as the Jesus Christ myth because they're two solely separate different things. So you have to understand that when you're coming at quality, like, quote unquote, hotel, a lot of times these guys out here, they're simply looking, they still have the same Judeo-Christian Islamic world view in their mind. They're just putting a layer of black consciousness, quote unquote, over it now. So instead of calling it Jesus, you just calling it horrors now, you know, and it, you can't, can't do it that way. Medu Netru, the language of ancient Kemet and the source of the word Hotep is a powerful language. Kemet, Kemetic spirituality is powerful. And that's, um, I'm reading from the blog. And like I go back to, if you ever engage in any sort of Kemetic ritual, you will attest to the power of it and the power to really transform the psyche. And for me, using, calling these people Hoteps is to me very offensive. And to take such a spiritual word and make it derogatory is offensive. Now, to get back to it, I know that within the whole, the quote unquote thing of calling these people hoteps, they are um, labeled as conspiracy theorists. Now, you know, that's a word or phrase that the mainstream media is they knew very carefully how to place this word within the which, you know, conspiracy theorists has always been around. But I think now, especially after last year, you know, with the whole Trump era and now this um the, the quote unquote bug that's going around. Your enemy is going to find your, your weakness and he's going to exploit it to his benefit. And so now when everybody some brings up conspiracy theorist, it's, all, it's automatically going to bring with it a negative connotation. Oh, they don't know what they're talking about. Oh, that, that, that conspiracy theorist shit, they, ain't, they don't mean nothing. I will say this, just because someone is looking into the matter a bit deeper does not make them a conspiracy theorist. Just because someone is going against the mainstream narrative of how things should be viewed does not make them a conspiracy theorist. Now to the quote unquote, I don't even want to call it a whole tip community. The, <laughs> the, um, let me, this, what, what word can we use? Let's use the, the false hotel community because these really aren't hotels at all. And I'm going to get into why it is. The false hotel community, not everything is an agenda. Not everything is a thing to kill off the heterosexual black man, which I think is sort of a, is wouldn't make sense, especially when you're trying to enslave and keep people enslaved. Why kill them off? The powers that be aren't trying to kill nobody off on that level, to me at least, because then when you're going to enslave and rule. But I will say that, though, you have to be very conscious of the rhetoric and things that you're saying, because not everybody around us is mentally sane. And you could be posing a lot of great harm on those because of the words that you're speaking. I go a little bit into it in my post, my uh, post yesterday about the baby and his comments and what he said that we have to be very careful because life and death is in the power of the tongue. So it's okay. I feel like if you have a theory on something and you may be looking at it, but it's about your way of going about trying to bring that out into to society. We read in the book, the Husea, the sacred wisdom of ancient Kemet in the book of Patahotep, 
there's a proverb that says, be not a- a- arrogant because of your knowledge. Take counsel with the ignorant as well as with the wise. For the limits of knowledge in any field have never been set, and no one has ever reached them. Wisdom is rarer than emeralds, yet it is found among the women who gather at the grindstones. With that being said, to the false hotel community, be not arrogant because you have a little bit of book knowledge and your brother and sister next to you may not have come to their understanding yet. Don't be arrogant. And I want people to understand that when you're approaching false hoteps, a lot of them are just simply regurgitating book knowledge within the within their already Christianized Islamic worldview. So you have to be very conscious of that. A lot of them aren't engaging on what they're talking about on any spiritual level, because if you engage with it on any spiritual level, you would have to realize that you just can't you can't treat other people the way, you know, some of these people treat people. So know the difference between engaging in something purely from an intellectual level versus engaging in something purely from a spiritual level and then engaging in something from a from a balance of spiritual and intellectual level. We have to be very understanding of that, very conscious of that when dealing with people. When I, a long time ago, found myself in a debate with the Hebrew Israelites, there was a lesson for me a very long time ago that you don't debate people like this. They're coming from something from a totally different level on where you're trying to get people to see something from. They're too focused on well, what God do you worship and um, what, what, what are we supposed to do when it comes to good and evil and stuff? Whereas I'm trying to give them a more of a historical cultural context as to why the Israelites may not have stolen, if we think of it that way, stolen something from Cameron, but were very much influenced by comedic spirituality and me trying to break it down historically. They wasn't having none of that. They just wanted to know, well, you your God don't say this, but our God says this in the Bible. And where's the prophecies about, you know, you can't engage on a level like that with, with folks that are coming from it from a different level. It's just best to ignore them and go about your way. So to the false hoteps, be very careful that you don't think that yourself any more wiser than the person that may have not reached that level of understanding yet, or may not even care to reach that level of understanding. So in closing, what then is a true hotep? A true hotep is one who is at peace with himself, herself, and the world around them. A true hotep is at peace with the divine. A true hotep does not incite violence amongst his brothers and sisters. A true hotep can contend with the wise as well as with the ignorant. A true hotep does not allow his knowledge to give him a false sense of superiority and a false sense of ego. A true hotep gives a voice to those who consider themselves voiceless. He defends those who are defenseless. A true hotep understands the balance of the feminine and the masculine within nature, but isn't arrogant enough to think that that feminine and masculine energy has to be regulated to one specific thing. A true hotel is truly a spiritual warrior in his community. He's able to give counsel. He or she is able to give counsel. He or she is able to, with their knowledge and with their understanding, with their wisdom, raise people up, not tear them down. Does not incite violence and bring death to those who may be different. I hate using that word different, but for lack of a better word. A true Hoteps brings his community together. He doesn't separate them. So with that being said, thank you so much guys for listening. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video and share it if you would like. As always, you can find me on Instagram at Amun Seti. Comment below, let me know what you guys are thinking and you have a blessed day. Thank mm-hmm. you.